Welcome to Ditch the Nest. This is Jennifer and I'm Lainey. Together, during COVID in 2021, we bought a house in Italy sight unseen from the internet. These videos will be about the adventure of traveling to Italy, seeing our house for the first time, fixing it up, and becoming part of the community in Santa Maria Oliveto. Join us on the adventure. It's going to be a blast. Hey, how's it going? Ditch the nesters. This week I wanted to talk a little bit about how we got things done in Italy. You know, we bought our house. That was the first step. And actually the purchase process was really simple. We used our Bruzzo Rural Property as our agent and they're set up to help Americans or non-Italians buy a house. So they made it very, very simple. The hardest part really was we had to get an apostille stamp here at the state house and that just required in COVID driving downtown Raleigh, submitting our application and then Jennifer driving back the next day to pick it up. Uh, other than that, it was really, really simple. <clears throat> um, but once we got there and we had uh, gotten in the house and started cleaning and realized we needed things, then we discovered how difficult it actually was for us not understanding how things worked there. Part of it was the language barrier. Part of it was not knowing where anything was. Part of it was the difficulty of searching for things in Google Maps or Apple Maps in Italy using uh, English words. Sometimes you had to put in the Italian words to find what you needed. Sometimes it was just a matter of knowing the right person. A uh, great example of that was our stove ran on propane and it took us it took us two weeks to get propane. So I went to Google, started searching for pro propane, and it frustratingly took me to Durham, where it knows I live. But I wasn't looking for propane in Durham. I was looking for, for propane in uh, Santa Maria Oliveto or somewhere near it. So uh, <clears throat> I started checking for other things like hardware stores. And you would Google things and then uh, if you drove there, sometimes they wouldn't be there anymore. Or as we found out in one case with a furniture store, it was actually, uh, from where Google Maps thought it was, it was like a mile away on the road. So there was a lot of frustration with those things. Um, we did get, get propane eventually, but that happened because we knew the right person. I think most of the things that happened in Italy that went well happened because we knew somebody there who could help us. For the first couple of weeks, we either ate out or we ate things that did not require us to cook. A lot of uh, a lot of salami, a lot of cheese, a lot of bread. It was awesome, but eventually we wanted something cooked that was not from a restaurant. So uh, our first night in Santa Maria Oliveto, before we even had keys to the house, we met a woman named Maria that lives in the village, and she. We spent about a half hour talking to us. We didn't understand much of what she said, but she was a friend very quickly. Uh, and, and we love seeing Maria. Maria has a, a partner named uh, Mr. Happy. We can't pronounce his name, um, but so he told us to call him Mr. Happy. Uh, at least he thinks we can't pronounce his name. I don't know. We probably can't pronounce his name. Um, so the night we met Mr. Happy, we were just walking out to our car and Maria stopped us and called him out of the house. And we talked for a few minutes and he speaks, uh, he speaks a little English. And I just asked, hey, do you know where we can get a propane bottle and propane? Um, we had asked our friend at the Emiliano at the hardware store. We had asked all around and just couldn't find it. So Mr. Happy said he'd pick me up the next day at 11 a.m. in the piazza and take me to get propane. Uh, and he'd even bring a bottle of his to loan us. So we, uh, next day at 11 a.m., he shows up, we jump in his car, and we drive uh, about a mile away. You can see uh, the place we drove from the window uh, of our kitchen or our bedroom or from the garden. It is an olive farm that is across the highway. Um, the farm sells eggs, they sell tomatoes, they sell olive oil, I think they sell olives, they sell propanes. 
But Mr. Happy had brought a bottle. We went to the olive farm. We went in, and there's a little uh, shed that you drive to, and a guy comes out, and you exchange bottles, just like Blue Rhino here in the States. Um, 20 euros later, we had a bottle. We had propane. We would have never have found that without knowing Mr. Happy and Maria. He even came over and installed it for us to make sure it was installed right. I'm not sure if he thought I couldn't install it or if he just was being extra helpful, but uh, he was awesome. Uh, and we were cooking, we're off cooking. Um, and now we know how to go get uh, propane, which is, which is good. Uh, <clears throat> some of the other things we ran into trouble with, and I'm gonna let Jennifer walk you through the trash situation. So let's talk about dealing with junk and trash in Italy. It was lots of fun, and I say that with all kinds of sarcasm. Um, I think the thing that was really struck me, and I don't know about you, but I think it was the um, the amount of stuff that was left behind that was not actual furnishings. And in Italy, they do talk about like the cabinetry and the parts of the kitchen because they're all designed to be moved around as being furnishings. So when we got a furnished house, we thought we were getting something really cool, but yet we also got, you know, mattresses from the last millennium, a lot of really disgusting um, bedding and blankets and full drawers everywhere. Shoes. Yuck. And, and uh, normally like right here, here in this, at least in North Carolina, I could rent a bag. I could get a bag serum for $200, have it hauled away. Right. You, that There's no college hunks hauling yeah. junk in Italy. We did have Rosaria who was able to find a man with a van that would right. come and he took most of like the dozen chairs and like six mattresses that we had. And, but there was a lot of other things like the 47, and that's a slight exaggeration, plastic bottles, yeah. um, crates, bags, wrappings, shredded, the clothes, that was fun. The mm -hmm. fabric stuff, uh, I say fun with sarcasm. Um, but there was a donation box we could put that into right in the village. and. One thing we didn't know that we learned towards the end is that one day a month, like the last Thursday. I think it's a Thursday, yes. Our particular commune comes, you can just put junk out and they'll come get it. Now, we didn't know that. The ironic part is it's like right next to where we park, uh, back near the gate. Yeah. And we looked up what the sign said, but it did. It, it, it said no, no dumping. junk. <laughs> but it's this big area. So on Thursday, I think the last Thursday we were there, we saw TVs and a couch and a couple of things there that yeah. had we known, we could have taken care of. But we only spent 50 euros to get it taken care of, except our plus. So even after we got the house emptied out of furniture and really furniture, all the mattresses, there were eight mattresses. There I think there's six. Two downstairs, two upstairs in the one bedroom. Well, four Six, then? five or six. six yeah. I don't know. A bunch. There were a lot. Um, and dozen chairs. Dozen. There were, there were dining chairs everywhere. Every everywhere. room had several to sit in. Like and Lots of animals had made their themselves yeah. comfortable upon them and and the years since they have been lived in yeah another thing that is worth noting is uh, is where we are is a really awesome place they have this wonderful recycling center that does a really a lot of good work but and every day of the week something different gets picked up and organics get picked up three times a week and we were concerned that our trash wouldn't be collected on a daily basis because we didn't have the, the little plastic bins that everybody had um not Everybody had them, though. Mm -hmm. We figured that out pretty fast. Um, so we got uh, went down to the place where Rosario told us to go, our Airbnb City host. Hall, basically. Well, no, he first sent us to that other place with the lady. Oh. At, which is where you can yes. go to get the bins. But she was, well, where's the receipt that you paid your taxes, which they call Tari. And we were like, oh, well, we got our tax code. And then we, you know, she's like, oh, no, 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 you pay you Tari. <laughs> you come back, we get you your bins and, and you got to go here. And so that was the city hall place. Right. But then they decided, they determined that we did not have a residential permit and they were telling us um, that our visitor visa was not good enough for this. So, so we can't pay the taxes for the, because it's a public service, even though we're getting water from the city through the same office. And electricity. Electri well, electricity it's comes from a private city. company. I know, yeah. but still it's a utility. Yeah. So, yeah, they wouldn't give it to us. They wouldn't give it to us without a residence permit. We can't get a residence permit unless we spend 
takes more than three months usually. So you got to have a long-term visa before you get a residence permit. So that's been an ongoing struggle, but they do pick up our trash. And we were worried because we had like eight bags of plastic after we cleaned the house and that they wouldn't take them all. But uh, Livius, uh, our friend talked to the guy and he, he said, just put it all out, I'll come get it. And sure enough, he did. Yeah, we were concerned. Um, I think our neighbors, Benjamin and his family, they um, they hadn't had any neighbors, obviously, in our little area for quite some time. So we definitely didn't want to leave a bad impression before we left. And cleaning up the house and making sure everything's done on the right day as we're leaving, it just takes a little extra effort. But it honestly is not that much different than when my family used to have to clean up the beach house mm -hmm. and we'd shut it down before a visit. So it's well, similar. The, the daily trash pick or six day a week trash pickup is very different. It's no, it's very different from from the United States, absolutely. Yeah. But it's very good. Yeah, I enjoy, I like it, and there's a lot of routine to the day. It goes right along with those church bills. <laughs> so, one of the other things we struggled with was uh, figuring out where to find a hardware store. So you jump on Google, you put in a hardware store, and it shows you like twenty things of an afro, and you go look at the pictures, and many of them look like someone's house. Um, some of them. It's hard to tell whether they're actually a uh, ferramenta de negocio, which is Italian for a hardware store. Um, we did, however, find one that had pictures and looked like it was in Venafro on a, on a big street and looked like it might still be open. Uh, so we had set out to, to go to that one. And before we went, we ran into the uh, Rosario who had rented our Airbnb to us the first week. And I asked him about it, and he said, jump in the car, follow me, I'm going to take you to my cousin's hardware store. It happened to be the one that I had found on the internet. He brought us in, introduced us to Emiliano, uh, who was his cousin, who works at the store, owns the store with his mom and dad. And uh, we, were, we, were, we had a hardware store. We had a place to get everything. The thing about Emiliano's hardware store is there is kind of one or two of everything. If you want a drill, there's one drill. If you want a hammer two hammers if you want paint there's a couple paints um so you you live with that it's not home depot where there's a lot of choices but emiliano is there to help and he will always go out of his way and he'll buy you a coffee most of the time when you come in and hang out with you um emiliano's amazing uh he will also show you how to use the things if you need help um he he goes out of his way to to help you but, and because we know Rosario, we get a we get a discount when we go there, which is also pretty cool. Um, not to pay full price for things. I or, or I think we're not paying full price. I actually have no idea whether we're paying full price. Uh, Emiliano says, this is the price, and then this is how much you pay, and I pay him. Um, the funny story about where our breaker box is in the house. Yeah. So we got into the house, we had the key, and our the people who become our contractors, Livius and Adrian were there, and this very old gentleman who lives uh, sort of two doors down, but really they're right there together, um, was there. We put on the water, and water came from most spigots yeah, immediately. Not which everything. Is, which, well, eventually, it's kind of like uh, under the Tuscan sun, so that was Csak mert idegesen kavarog a gyomrom, és hirtelen zokogni szeretnék, még nem biztos, hogy hibáztam. Mindenki tudhatja, hogy a régi házak furán viselkednek. Különösen a 300 évesek. Sun, so that was good. But we couldn't figure out where to turn on the electricity and come to find out our very old neighbor who it would be like, you know, older than my mom. So He's probably be 80. Yeah, get pushing 80. Um he comes in and he's and he, and he he's also this is after he's volunteered to like sweep out our doorstep. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. So sweet. Um, but he comes in and, and he turns immediately left and there's this really yucky picture on the wall and he lifts it up and there's this niche behind it and that's where the electricity box, he's like, you know, and I don't care remember what he said, but anyways, it was funny. And then the lights came. Mm. <laughs> alive, it's alive, it's alive. And it, it was, it was, it was kind of hilarious. That was after we had spent, what, 45 minutes with Livius and Adrian trying to find it? I think you were spending 45 minutes. Yeah. I was probably sweeping something. Yeah. Last thing I think would be what I would ask for if I was to buy a house in Italy again. So if we had to do this process over, I think that in communication with the realtor, I would ask that 
everything that's not furnishings is removed from the house and that the house is what we in America, well, in, in the South anyways, refer to as being broom clean, which means that your cobwebs are swept and that the big stuff is out of there, even if, you know, it hasn't been lived in for a bit. Doesn't have to be like sterilized, but just broom clean. Right. Um, and then of course specify exactly the things we wish to remain. I think I would pay more for a situation to have that done before we arrive, especially yeah. in a place where we don't speak the language. Yeah, but we'll do an episode on how we bought the house and things to look for in buying a house uh, separately. Sorry, there are mosquitoes attacking me well, right now. Well, then let's go. Let's yeah. get done. Anyway. Maybe so they are attacking you. Yeah, I'm getting... Hit the like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you.